Ms. Ruckelman, can I start with you? In 2018, the day after the Supreme Court ruled that California couldn't force pro-life pregnancy centers, resource centers, to advertise on behalf of abortion clinics, you wrote an interesting op-ed in the Huffington Post. I have it right here. You said in this op-ed that pregnancy resource centers are nothing but faux clinics, that's your word, that pose as real medical facilities. Do you remember writing this? I don't remember that particular article, Senator, but I take your word for it. You, you don't, it was 2018, you don't remember writing it? Just not that particular article, but I'm happy to answer whatever questions you may have about it. Well, let me just ask what you meant by faux clinics. Do you stand by that, that pregnancy resource centers are faux clinics that pose as medical facilities? Faux means fake, of course, so you're saying that they're fake clinics? Uh, Senator, I believe the case that you're referring to is the Nifla versus Becerra case, and um, I was involved in that case as an advocate on behalf of Amiki, and the case concerned a California law that was a, a consumer protection law that was enacted after some women reported that they felt misled about the types of services that were available at the centers, and that's all that I was referring to there. Well, no, I'm asking about your, your comments that pregnancy resource centers are faux clinics. We have had representatives from pregnancy resource centers here before this committee testifying under oath who testified that at their centers they employ trained licensed medical professionals so is your is your testimony here that these folks are lying under oath that they're that that's not the case that these centers are all fake Absolutely not, Senator. Again, I was just referring to um, the amicus brief that I'd written as an advocate in that case, which shared stories of women from California who had gone to some pregnancy centers without understanding that they didn't provide any medical services at that particular center. Well, how about this? Is an ultrasound a legitimate medical procedure, in your view? Of course, Senator. Okay. So countless pregnancy resource centers provide ultrasounds. Those are medical procedures. Ultrasounds allow fatal abnormal, fetal ab abnormalities to be diagnosed and treated early on. So surely those aren't faux clinics. Uh, in another article, you said that these clinics cause women to suffer concrete harms to their health. Um, it, that's just confusing to me. I mean, these clinics, and there are thousands of them across the country, including in my home state of Missouri, provide free pregnancy tests, free ultrasounds, Free prenatal care, free adoption care, free diapers, free clothes, free car seats. Many of them even provide free job training. And yet you're saying that they're faux clinics. Senator, I absolutely support all parents having the resources they need. In that article, I was merely speaking as an advocate about the particular law that had just been um, evaluated by the Supreme Court, which was a consumer protection law in response to some women who had felt misled by well, some centers. You were using the Supreme Court's decision as an opportunity to tarnish and to go after pregnancy resource centers, which is frankly something we've seen from our, our friends here on the left who would like to eliminate these pregnancy resource centers and shut them down all across the country. They're very open about that. I'm just trying to figure out, is that your view too? Would you like to see these pregnancy resource centers that provide this free medical care to women shut down across the country so that free medical care for women is no longer available? Uh, Senator, once again, I was just speaking about one particular law uh, in California that was enacted as a consumer protection law just to make sure that all women could have whatever information they needed to make the best decisions for themselves. That's well, all that I was speaking let about. Let me ask you about the Supreme Court's decision in the 2007 case, Gonzalez versus Carhartt. You're familiar with that case, I assume. Yes, I know that case. Um, let me just read briefly from the case. Dr. Haskell went in with forceps and grabbed the baby's legs and pulled them down into the birth canal. Then he delivered the baby's body and arms, everything but the head. Then the doctor stuck the scissors into the back of his head and the baby's arms jerked out. The doctor opened up the scissors, stuck a high-powered suction tube into the opening, and sucked the baby's brains out. That's partial birth abortion. Congress banned this procedure by bipartisan majority in, majority in 2003. Do you think Congress made the right call there? Senator, uh, what I know is that the Supreme Court upheld that act, I believe, about 15 years ago, and it's been settled law in the country for all of that time. And, of course, I will faithfully follow it if I were so fortunate as to become a judge. Well, I'm asking because in 2019, 
news outlet, outlet in Oklahoma quoted you saying, you oppose any attempt to regulate abortion procedures. The article says that you opposed an, an Oklahoma state law that, quote, bans dismemberment abortions. And it quotes a public statement you released saying, we cannot overstate the harm this decision will have on women in Oklahoma. Politicians should never take medical options off the table for pregnant patients. So you're against bans on partial birth abortion. No, Senator. The law has been settled there for 15 years, and just to be clear, all of the work that I did as an advocate was within the confines of Supreme Court precedent, which allowed states to impose limits on abortion, but also recognized that women should be able to make their own personal medical decisions. Well, my time has expired. I know there are other senators who, who want to ask questions, so I will uh, return, the, uh, return the floor to the chairman. I just want to say in conclusion, Ms. Rickleman, that I have to say that your characterization of pregnancy centers your opposition to, frankly, radical pro-abortion laws, um, I, I think are, are, are very, very troubling. And it gives me grave concern about your nomination. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Hirono. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have two judicial nominees 